Planning Committee meeting to order. Withers. Okay, we'll begin with RS 2016-340 sponsors Dow, Pridemore, and Allen. This authorizes the Director of Public Property to purchase 13 acres for Cane Ridge Cluster Elementary School. I have a letter to approve. Council Member Dow. Your mic is waiting for you. Um, I'm going to ask for a one meeting deferral on this bill. We have a um, zoning legislation that I deferred after the public hearing for two meetings, so I want this to track with that. And uh, I'm working with um, um, our attorney, I don't know why I'm going brain dead, to um, prepare a substitute for that. And so we should be all finalized by the next meeting. Thank Sounds you. Good. Okay, we have a motion for one meeting deferral. Is there a second? Great. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any people just to, yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. 13 in favor, one against, thank you. Next is RS 2016-344. Sponsors O'Connell, Allen, and Elrod. This authorizes Albany Road Real Estate Partners, LLC, to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 201 4th Avenue North. Do I have a motion? Then moved and seconded, any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Actually, resolution is recommended. Next is RS 2016-345, sponsors O'Connell, Allen, and Elrod. This authorizes Hard Rock Cafe International to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 108 2nd Avenue North. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion. All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-342, sponsors Pridemore, Allen, and others. This amends the Metro Code to create an affordable and workhorse housing grants program. Do I have a motion? There's a proposed amendment. Would you like to move that? Um, Council Member Pridemore, as soon as I find your button. Yes, sir. I think the majority of people were here when uh, we uh, explained it, but actually there's two, uh, two points to the highlights. And, that is, uh, provide the sunset provision from it cha uh, changing from two to three years, and also uh, basically eliminating the UZO uh, requirement for the uh, for the initiatives. There are some initiatives uh, uh, available for existing developments who choose to opt in that are located in the non-affordable areas. So um, I just move the amendment. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor? Any opposed? Amendment passes. Is there a motion on the bill as amended? Move for amendment. Move for approval. Then moved and seconded. All those in favor of the bill as amended? Aye. Any opposed? Bill passes 14 to nothing. Next is BL 2016 345, sponsors O'Connell, Allen, and Elrod. This abandons an existing water main and one fire hydrant and accepts new water mains, four fire hydrants, and any associated easements for property located at 1100 Charlotte Avenue. Do I have a motion? Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-346, sponsors Hager, Allen, and Elrod. This abandons an existing sewer main and easement and accepts a new sewer main and easement for property located at 1104 Safety Harbor Cove. Do you have a motion? Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-347, sponsor Sledge, Allen, and Elrod. This abandons an existing sewer main and manholes and accepts new sewer mains, manholes, new water mains, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements for properties located at 512, 514, 518, 520 Southgate Avenue, and 1608 Pillow Street. Do I have a motion? Then moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-348, sponsors Davis, uh, Scott Davis, Allen, and Elrod. This abandons a portion of Alley 330 right-of-way. Do I have a motion? Then moved and seconded. All those in favor? Any opposed? 
Got your alley. Um, bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-283, sponsor a sledge. This changes 1.02 acres from R6 to SP zoning for properties located at 522, 524, and 526 Southgate Avenue to permit up to 23 residential units. Do I have a motion? Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-298, sponsor is Scott Davis. Changes 45.67 acres from CN, CS, OR20, RS10, OL, and RS5 to RM40A zoning for various properties located along Kingston Street, Queen Avenue, Duke Street, Prince Avenue, East Trinity Lane, and Sultana Avenue. I understand there is a substitute. Councilmember Davis. Madam President, I'd like to move the approved substitute. Thank you. We have a second. Do we need an explanation of the substitute? Please, uh, someone from the planning table. Uh, yes, when the uh, when the rezoning request came through, the planning staff worked with Councilman Davis to come up with a, a plan, and that was and the plan was what was approved, and that's reflected in the substitute that was recommended for approval by the planning commission. Thank you, recommended for approval. Great. Any other questions? All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. As substituted, do we need to vote again? As substituted, all those in favor of the bill as substituted? Uh, any opposed? Okay, now it's recommended as substituted. Thank you. Next is BL 2016-304, sponsors Kindle, changes 0.29 acres from R6 to SP zoning for property located at 1016 33rd Avenue North to permit four residential units within the existing structure. I have a letter from the sponsor to approve. Do I have a motion? Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, yes, I see some discussion. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think this uh, is quite uh, unusual uh, zone change. If I so, I would like to have a little explanation from the planning. It seems like it was uh, currently non-legal, non-conforming use, and by changing to SP, we are legalizing non-conforming use. And then if by any chance they are building the new development, it will bring up to conforming use. Am I understanding correct? The existing structure has four units in it, um, which was not permitted by the codes department. So the SP would allow those four units co to continue in the existing structure. If it redeveloped, it would then go to two units. That's correct. Thank you. Council Member Sledge. I, I had a question of the planning department. I'm looking through the notes here. It, it has marked as, that the staff recommendation is disapproved, but then I've got, I'm looking at, I'm, and I apologize if I'm reading this wrong, that it's been approved by the commission 8-1, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. We, staff did recommend disapproval, but the commission felt that since it was in the existing building, they were comfortable with it meeting the character of the area. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Murphy. I have a similar case at, at before the BZA this week um, about uh, a, a structure that was non-conforming and they got a variance, da, 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 Is Do you know the history of this property? Did they try to go to the BZA to seek a variance? I'm not aware that they tried to go to the BZA, but in this case, they were not legally permitted in the first place, and okay. so they needed to have the rezoning to be able to have the number of units that, that they currently had. So have they ever been... Um, so this property was never zoned to allow this many units? Or if it was, the, they weren't constructed during that time. We couldn't find a history of these specific units being permitted. And the owner w wouldn't testify to when they were they were built or, or something? The, at the Planning Commission, the owner testified that they purchased it with the four units, okay. the current owner. I just, I'm, this sends up some red flags to me simply because I've got a case um, at the Board of Zoning Appeals this Thursday that um, 
was actually challenged up to to the court through Chancery Court and the Court of Appeals, and my neighbors um, won, and it got remanded back to the Board of Zoning Appeals. So first of all, that's exciting for for the neighbors who often feel like they are up against developers. I have some concerns here that this is a illegal building that that instead of um, requiring them to come into compliance, that we are simply giving them a pass. What is to stop the next person or anyone um, to start just building what they want with or without a permit um, and expanding their uses illegally and then coming back to the council um, for for zoning to, to change and allow it. I, I'm very concerned that this sets a very dangerous precedent that you can have illegal structures, illegal buildings, um, you having uses without permits and that we'll simply just look the other way and pass a zoning and, and allow it. So I really caution my fellow committee members to, to think through this um, and think hard about whether we wanna allow an illegal building to then be turned into a, a legally conforming building. I, I think that there's some concerns here that we need to really think about. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Davis. Did the Planning Commission approve this? The commissioners approve this? Yes. So the commissioners approve this. That's all. And I would like to ask planning staff if there was any report about a community meeting taking place or not. We're not aware of a We're community not aware meeting. Of that. Okay, that, would, that would be relevant. Any other questions? Seeing no more questions in the queue, all those in fact, I'm sorry, oh, Sledge, okay, you did. I thought that was an old one, sorry. Council Member Sledge. I, I just want to say I, I'm not doubting the council member's intentions, but and I know that he sent a letter, but given that he's not here and we do have questions on uh, kind of the conversation that took place in the context of this, I, I would like to see if my fellow committee members might be open to a one meeting deferral just so we could get that Second. conversation. Okay, it's been moved and seconded on for a one meeting deferral. All those in favor? Any opposed? One meeting deferral. Next is BL 2016-305, sponsors Kindle changes 0.75 acres from IR to MULA zoning for property located at 615 26th Avenue North. Um, I do have a letter to approve. Is there a motion? Been moved and seconded. Uh, see no discussion. All those in favor? All those against? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-306, sponsors Kindle. Changes 0 0.67 acres from RS5 to MULA zoning for property located at 2701, 2703, and 2705 Clifton Avenue. I have a letter from the sponsor to approve. Is there a motion? Been moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-309 as amended by Alan Coleman and others. This amends the Metro Code with regard to sign regulation. Is there a motion? Been moved and seconded. Was that a question? There we go. Council Member Withers. Could we possibly get an explanation of the bill and the amendment and how that pertains to signs, especially in residential areas? Yes. Um, um, before we cast a final a sponsor, vote, please. I will, I will begin briefly and, and, <laughs> and our council can fill in the gaps. Um, this was prompted because of a, a Supreme Court ruling that stated that me metropolitan, well, that cities cannot legislate content of signs. And our sign ordinance um, had a number of areas that seemed to be in uh, questionable compliance with that. So this is largely a rewriting to take out any reference to content and instead simply make references to size or, or areas like that. Anything to add? Microphone, sorry. You're on. Supreme Court decision came out 2015. Uh, a city in Arizona had a different set of rules for political signs versus religious signs. A religious landowner sued on the basis that the city was regulating the content. Um, so there are at least three provisions within our uh, code that have specific content-based restrictions, bed and breakfast, STRPs, home occupation use. We can't do that. Um, so those are now relegated to our overarching generic sign provision in section 1732. There's also a provision in section 16, paragraph 16 of 1704 
that talks about on-sign, on-premises signs that allows within certain zone districts, you can advertise an event or use that's off your premises, mostly in commercial and shopping center and mixed use districts. This takes out CSA, commercial services, and CLA zoning districts from that allowance. Other questions? So just for a layman or for the viewing audience at home, for, for signs such as for historic bed and breakfast, which we have, or short-term rental or other uses, home occupation, are those signs now permitted but only within a certain size limit? That is correct, one square foot. And would you, uh, thank you, and would, would you further um, explain how this interacts with historic district guidelines? My anticipation is that this is going to be a, a, a two-tiered approach. Number one, we have to make these changes to be compliant with the U.S. Supreme Court. Can we then go back with a more subtler scalpel and see if we can add to the 1732 specific provisions that subtly differ for historic zoning areas? I suspect that we will. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-319, sponsor Scott Davis. Uh, this was disapproved by the Planning Commission. Changes 1.97 acres from CN, RS5, and SP to SP zoning for properties located at 1224, 1225, 1227, 1229, 1231, and 1300 Lishy Avenue to permit all uses permitted by the MULA district except for alternative financial services district. I understand there is a, a substitute. Council Member Davis. Yes, um, I'd like to move the approved substitute and the friendly amendments. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, do we need an explanation from planning? The substitute um, is what was approved by the Planning Commission, and so the substitute would put it in line with the Planning Commission's approval. Um, the amendment was just delivered this afternoon, and so we haven't reviewed all of the conditions that are in there. The first one, we do have some concerns about um, because the plan that went to the Planning Commission limited the FAR to 1.4. The amendment intends to increase it to 1.6 on third reading. That's not what was noticed to the community or went through the Planning Commission. Thank you. Um, Council Member Mina Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think uh, this uh, amendment uh, removes uh, the to property which uh, property owner expressively asked to remove it and I really want to thank a uh, district council member working hard and listening to the uh, community and working with the planning staff and I commend his hard work and thank you. Certainly. Should we vote on the substitute and the amendment separately? So we are voting on the substitute. Oops. Council member, we're vo voting on the substitute at this point. We'll come back to the amendment. Is that Oh, we're coming back to the amendment. We'll come back to the amendment. We're voting right. on the substitute. Thank you, Madam President. Okay, all those in favor of the substitute, which was approved by the Planning Commission. Aye. Any opposed? Substitute is recommended. Uh, now we are speaking to the amendment. Council Member Davis. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ms. Logan, um, I don't, th that could have been a clerical error by the um, engineer by Roy Dale. Because um, the amendments I was preparing to were the one for affordable housing and the one for the market. Um, is there a, hmm. Should we perhaps defer to be sure? Yours says 1.6. The amendments packet in section four does say 1.6, yes. I, I can, can we strike, uh, can let we Mr. Cooper elaborate. Without a suspension? What, what I would suggest, Councilman, we did get um, that amendment language from Mr. Dale. He may have been mistaken on the 1.6. My suggestion is you, you've uh, approved, uh, adopt the substitute, then defer simply so that we in planning can rev review the amendments. Because again, we got about a half dozen proposed changes just in this afternoon's packet. The difficulty for deferring is because the contract it runs out on the on the market, and we held everything to get the um, affordable and the um, and the grocery clause in there. 
Can I amend from the floor just to get rid of that so I'm in, in compliance with the planning staff? Yeah, just move to suspend the rules and then amend it. Uh, do we suspend the rules here or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So tomorrow you would need to move to suspend the rules to make your amendment from the floor, which if you've submitted ahead of time and people have on their desk might be helpful. Okay. And so we are voting on the amendment. Why don't you just approve the substitute? He'll take we'll the approve amendment. the substitute and let Councilmember Davis deal with the amendment tomorrow. So we have, uh, we have approved the substitute and we are now voting on the bill as substituted. All those in favor of the bill? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Not voted. Next is BL 2016-320, sponsor is Dowell. This changes 2.19 acres from AR2 to MUL zoning for property located at 5140 Hickory Hollow Parkway. Is Councilmember Dowell here? There she is, okay, great. Do we have a motion? Moved. And it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, uh, Councilmember Murphy, that would you, were you speaking on the last bill? And I failed to recognize you. Do you wish to speak on this one? Okay, gotcha. Okay, so we are voting on uh, BL 216-320, seeing no, no, no one in the queue for discussion. All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-321, sponsor is Sledge, changes 0.21 acres from CS to MULA zoning for property located at 2125 8th Avenue South. Council members, been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-332, sponsors O'Connell changes 0.47 acres from IWD to MULA zoning for property located at 237 Hermitage Avenue. Do you have a motion? Been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue for discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-323, sponsor is Freeman. Uh, uh, changes 0 0.26 acres from RS 7.5 to SP zoning for property located at 500 Veritas Street to permit two residential units. I have a letter to approve. Do you have a motion? Anybody wait? Thank you, second. Great, uh, all those in, uh, seeing no one in the queue, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Those recommended. Next is BL 2016-324, sponsor is Sledge, changes 0.95 acres from IWD to SP zoning for properties located at 1267 and 1271 Third Avenue South to permit a mixed use development with a maximum of 82 residential units and a maximum of 8,700 square feet of non-residential uses. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Chair uh, Lady Allen. I needed to move an amendment. Okay. Do we need to explain that amendment? Sure, the amendment does two things. One, and both are in conjunction with the applicant. It um, ensures the property is not eligible for short-term rental property permits and it is voluntary compliance with 2016-133 uh, if the associated financial incentives are approved. So with that, I would make the motion on the amendment. Thank you. Um, we have a second. Great, the amendment has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. And I would move the bill as amended. All right, we're voting on the bill as amended. All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-326, sponsor is Henderson. Changes 1.96 acres from CS to SP zoning for property located at 5630 Franklin Pike Circle. There you are. <laughs> sponsor is here, do we have a motion? Been moved and seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2016-237, sponsor Syracuse. This amends the Metro Code pertaining to artisan, at this point, I think, distilleries. Council Member Syracuse, do you have a motion? Okay, been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any spelling question? All those in favor? Yes, hold up. The planning table would like to speak. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. I do believe this needs to be um, a substituted. This needs on, to be substituted? Yes, on third reading. Did we not do that on second reading? I don't believe so. Okay. I, 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 
I jumped in front of you. Council Member Syracuse. Thank you. I'd like to move the substitute. Move the substitute. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the substitute? Now it's artisan. Okay. Any, any opposed? All right. Uh, Council Member Syracuse. I'd like to move the bill as substituted. As substituted. Great. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Council Member Mina Johnson, did you wish to speak on this? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just confused. What's the substitute? I have not seen the substitute on my desk. Okay. The substitute corrects one word. It changes it from artesian to artisan. <laughs> to artisan. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but somebody's gonna invent artesian distillery soon. <laughs> They'll be great. Okay, so we are voting on the bill as substituted. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Uh, seeing nothing else on the docket, if there's no other news, we are adjourned.